So, uh, yeah, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Dr. Jerome Thaler. I happen to be Max's grandfather, and I have had a long-term interest in geolo local geology particularly, and I've uh, made presentations on uh, the geology of northern Westchester in Putnam County, and what I'm going to present to you is a samples of the different bedrocks that you find here in northern Westchester. Uh, so why don't, why don't you show me what you got? Okay, well, let me give you a little background. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let me explain that the rocks in northern Westchester and Putnam are probably among the oldest in the entire United States. Wow. And also, they are highly complex in terms of their, their structure. Uh, the geologic structure is the result of many continental co collisions, and some of the rocks have been formed deep. When I say deep, we're talking about somewhere between 10 and 20 miles deep in the earth to change them into the forms that you see. The other thing that you should be aware of is that none of these rocks have fossils in them because they've been changed in form. Even the youngest ones that I'm going to show you don't have any fossils, even though they may have been made up of original fossils of, uh, of uh, calcium, uh, organisms that had calcium carbonate in them. But the, you won't see any fossils in any of these rocks. Okay. So what do we got? Now, I'm going to be presenting these thing, these rocks in their chronological order. The oldest ones are that make up the highlands. The highlands particularly are the most of the rocks of Putnam County. And these are uh, what the, we call highland, highlands granite or gneiss. A gneiss is a, a rock that has been changed in form from a, gran from a granite or mixed granite with other stuff in it into gneiss and you can see roughly bands where the compression has occurred. Yeah, so show me the bands there. Right across here and there are others here. You can see the, the band structure this way. So so here's the banding. Yeah. So that means that the, the, the rock was like this and it was being pressed right, down. Right. And how, how deep under the ground was Nice made? About? About, I'd say, anywhere over 10 miles deep in the wow. earth. And this is the, the highlands of Putnam County are, are made up in large part of these rocks. <clears throat> so what, what, is, what is Nice made out of? Well, you said it was made out of it, granite, but so what is granite made out of? It has a, a high amount of quartz in it. And mixed in with the quartz are minerals that have uh, iron in it. So you have bands of quartz and iron compounds that make up gneiss. Cool. <clears throat> so how old this gneiss is? Let's see. This particular rock was formed 1.2 billion years, and <clears throat> it was the result of a continental collision that forced the rocks deep into the earth. One thing that people should be aware of is that all of the continents literally are made up of lighter weight rocks that have floated to the surface on the, on the earth. The deepest rocks, the core, are made up of iron, nickel, and then you have a less dense uh, the inner mantle, which make, makes up the rocks around it, surrounding it, and the the top layer is the lithosphere, is made up the of the lightest rocks that have a high percentage of aluminum, sodium, calcium, and they literally float like whipped cream on top of the rocks underneath. That's so cool. And, and as a result, they're moved around relatively easily over millions of years. Uh, think of uh, heat in a pot and whipped cream on top. If you put the heat underneath, you'll see the whipped cream moving around. Mm -hmm. Where literally, that's what happens on the surface of the earth, the lithosphere. Cool. So let's look at our next sample. <clears throat> next step is 
the rock that's for the Fordham Nice. Now there's a there's a series of rocks here. The Fordham Nice, Inward Marble, and Manhattan Schist make up what's called the New York City series, and they have been named after exposures in New York City, in the Fordham area of the Bronx, in the northern Manhattan Island, the Inwood, and the, the main area of Manhattan is made up of the Manhattan Schist. And I'll go into the, the, the Fordham Nice is a little bit younger than the Highlands Nice, but it's also, pull out a rock it's it. also very similar in structure in that it has the same kind of banding that you see in the Highlands Nice. So what kind of, what would get these rocks buried so deeply? Was there sediment layer <coughs> on top of them? Or? No, no, no sediments. The, if you think of the continental movement, think of uh, the continent of India moving north into Asia and creating the uh, Himalayan mountains. At the same time, you have the, uh, the Pacific Plate in North America where uh, it's literally diving under Japan. The, the plate is being pushed against Asia and diving under Japan. So you have these movements causing uh, earthquakes and tsunamis because the ocean is nearby. And that, that's literally how these so when the when the Appalachian Mountains were being formed, you had a similar kind of yeah, subduction exactly. situation. You had a subduction situation exactly. Gotcha. And so and this was 1.15 billion years yeah. ago. Was the Appalachian Mountains and, are, are that old? And a little bit younger are the biotite gneiss rocks, and these rocks were uh, also in the same vintage as the Fordham gneiss, approximately. So what is biotite? Is that a mineral? Biotite is a, a certain kind of mineral. It has a uh, high amount of, uh, well, you don't see it here. You don't see the darkness, but it's, uh, it, it is a particular type of mineral. Mm -hmm. And so that rock doesn't seem to be as banded as the other no, two. No, not. It comes various, nices can come less banded and more banded. Now, on top, on top of that, you had the first, these mountains that were formed mm -hmm. were eroded, and the first erosion that took place was a high amount of, of sandy material. The sandy material originally formed a sandstone, mm -hmm. and this next sequence of metamorphism, of changed form, is a quartzite. And the Poque quartzite was the first literally uh, sedimentary rock that was formed on top of these gneisses. So <clears throat> this is this is 490 million years yeah. old, so it's half a billion years. But but actually, originally it was a, a sandstone turned into a, uh, um, when it was metamorphosed, it was turned into a quartzite. So, so the, the basic idea is you, you had some of these. You had mountains made of, of mm -hmm. harder igneous rocks. And then those igneous rocks eroded. Eroded and for, into, formed into an ocean mm -hmm. and formed this first sandstone. And from sandstone, they were further metamorphosed later on in another earth movement, mm -hmm. forced deep into the ground and, and changed into a denser form, which is a quartzite. So this, this process took about 500 million years. Can you... The, the process of, of changed form could take millions of years, not necessarily 500 million years, because the, the, uh, that amount of time <clears throat> could have taken three, 400 million years. Mm -hmm. On top of that, in an ocean, was limestone, the first organic life in the form of minute particles, minute particles of uh, formed limestone. Limestone literally is of little bits of tiny organisms that have a high percentage of lime. And over millions of years, they formed these beds, which were limestone beds. And they also later on became metamorphosed 
into marble. So this is marble. This is a marble. It's a poor grade marble. It's not the kind of marble that people make statues of. Mm -hmm. It's a poor grade. And in northern Westchester, in northern Westchester and, and, and New York City, the, the rock that is most susceptible to erosion is this marble because it's, it's a high, it's water, it erodes readily. Well, it's so what's, what's marble made out of? It's a limestone, basically limestone. What's and limestone and, made out of? And limestone has a, a, a high calcium amount mm -hmm. and, and carbonate amount in it. And it gets eroded. So all of your major streams, like the, the Bronx River and the Sawmill River, and even in New York City, the Harlem River, the bedrock underneath is made up of uh, inward of marble. marble. And limestone, it's water soluble, right? Because it, it's the yes. same stuff that creatures make their shells out of. So over, it, the, over the years, with uh, a certain amount of acidic in the atmosphere, will erode mm -hmm. these more readily than the granites. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> subsequent, after the inward marble was deposited, another continent moved by plate tectonic movements, and mud deposits were to, uh, put on top of the inward marble. Mm -hmm. And the mud er, turned into a rock called shale, and the rock, the next stage of metamorphism was a rock called phyllite. 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 So this used to be mud. This used to be mud. <laughs> This Doesn't look very mud, muddy. Mud became shale, and shale became slate, slate. Mm -hmm. And the next harder thing, the slate and slate, <coughs> is the phyllite. <coughs> and <coughs> after the phyllite, with further metamorphism, came what we know call the Manhattan schist, which is recognizable by the, the shiny bands, little flakes of muscovite or mica. Mm. This all is that, mica. All that's, that shiny yeah, stuff. Yeah, all that shiny stuff that's is, really is mica. That's really pretty. And, so pretty. And, and you, can get, you can get mica from tiny bits to, to pieces that big. Whoa. Hold on one second. Let's look at that mica. Wow. And if you go to the intersection of the Taconic and Baldwin Mountain, Baldwin Road, I should say, you uh, have an exposure where these particles, these big particles, were found. Whoa. That's these so are cool. Book, books of mica. The sequence should be the other way around. Oh, yes. Yeah. The, the phyllite formed before. So I have at the time frame is not exactly correct, but you'll excuse the the order here. Now somewhere around after the Manhattan schist was deposited as a mud and became somewhat metamorphic. There was a big intrusion of very dark uh, lava type rocks, and this is making up now the entire. County of Cortland, which in, in borders on Peekskill, just south of Peekskill, and it's called the Cortland Complex. And this is lava type rocks. So that's Gabbro. That's a, a Gabbro. So, what's Which the one? difference between Gabbro and granite? Gabbro has a very higher, the darker the rock, the more iron it has in it. Okay. Granite is, is much lighter and denser than, than <coughs> Gabbro or the rocks that make up. But, and the, the crystal size is different too, right? Granite is cooled a lot slower and so its crystals are much bigger. Yes, that's right. And Gabbro, was the Gabbro actually Gabbro on the surface? More, more form closer to the surface. Oh, but it, but it wasn't actually lava. It was still... No. It, uh, it probably was intruded into the earth, mm -hmm. but not as a lava. Not as a typical lava that you would find, let's say, in 
Hawaii. Gotcha. And the youngest of all the rocks, their exposure, 365 million years, is the Peekskill granite, which is a very <coughs> light color. It has a high amount of, uh, of uh, <coughs> calcium carbonate in it, and a high amount of, I should say, uh, silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide in it of a lighter, in other words, it doesn't have as much iron in it. And this is exposed in a small area. And this rock here was contemporaneous with uh, the first fish in the oceans mm. at that time. If you want to go back, let's go back to about somewhere around 500. They, they the geologists divide these. This is into eras. Mm -hmm. The quartzite, where the first fossil life is the Cambrian era. Mm -hmm. Everything before 500 million years is called Precambrian, where there are literally no fossils at all in the sedimentary rock, which is not found, as I said, in, in Westchester, Putnam County. So this rock range from here, we've got 1.2 billion years ago to here is 365 million years ago. So can you give me an idea of how, how long that is on, on some kind of scale? Uh. Well, that's, uh, you can't, if you talk about the Earth's history, the, Earth's, the Earth itself is about the uh, same age as the Sun, about 4.5 billion years old. Mm -hmm. And the earliest uh, rock <clears throat> that we find of any consequences is about uh, 3.8 billion years and the earliest fossils that are around the Proto Proterozoic era I think somewhere around 3 billion years they find the first microscopic mm -hmm. microscopic organisms in the Proterozoic and then you have the ancient next era is called the Paleozoic old life and that's where you have the first fossil life, which is the Cambrian era. Mm -hmm. I can't give you, in terms of a human life, the best way of expressing it, if you took my arm's length out here, mm -hmm. and the origin of the Earth was on my left hand, and on my right hand, if you the earliest life would have occurred somewhere at the beginning of my arm, my right arm. Uh -huh. There was no life. And if you go on all the way, if you want to know human existence, you'd have to take a nail file and scrape off the, the tip of my nail on my <laughs> right hand. A tiny scrape. That's the entire human history relative to the rest of the Earth's history. That's great. That's the best analogy I could give. Cool. Where did you get all these rocks? These rocks are the result of uh, different, either different excavations, highway constructions, or uh, places where I knew there would be exposures, and I would take a geologic hammer, a hammer, and break the rock open to get these exposures because the surface rock what appears on the surface doesn't in any way look like the samples that I've shown mm -hmm. because the surface rock has been weathered over the years. And as uh, one of the things you should be aware of that most of the rocks that you find as loose rocks are glacial in origin. They've been pushed around by one or two glaciers that have come through the area and all of the stone walls well weathered, of course, have been the result of glaciers that have literally pushed these rocks all over and eroded and broken up mm -hmm. so that all of the stone walls are the result of glacial action and pioneers that piled them into stone walls. Gotcha. <coughs> so, so these rocks that you got here, these, they were all newly exposed That's for right. whatever reason. And, and you grabbed them before the weather could, could well, weather I them. Broke, I broke them down. I went, uh -huh. to, I went to places where they were newly exposed, like this Manhattan Schist, when they were building the 
part of the Taconic Parkway about 20 years ago. They put this rock cut at Baldwin and they exposed this beautiful exposures of the uh, be beds of Manhattan schist mm -hmm. and the large pieces of uh, mica or muscovite. That's really cool. But right, right now, if you went to that same cut, everything would be weathered. And unless you had a, a good hammer <coughs> to break open rock, you wouldn't find anything on the surface. Mm -hmm. Wow. So how long have you been searching for rocks in, in northern well, Westchester? I, I, gave, I gave a course in uh, uh, geology, and part of the course was showing the local rocks of the area. And it's, it's very difficult because people think of geology in terms of fossils mm -hmm. and uh, dinosaur bones and things of that kind, and you don't have any of that in northern Westchester and Putnam. Mm -hmm. Cool. And if anyone wants more, <laughs> I am available for more detailed lectures. <laughs> you okay. Can contact me on my email address is Joey. -E -L -L I'll, I'll put it. I'll put it right there. I'll 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 put it on the screen. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs> <coughs>